Welcome to Money Two TV. We're here with Coach Desso, the South Cadet. Coach Desso, thanks for having us once again. No problem. <laughs> hey, we appreciate it. Anytime you guys want to come out, we're more than happy to have you. All right. Now let's talk about um, you know some of the, uh, the, uh, the good things you did last season. Let's talk about those uh, expectations you, you came in with last season. The expectations you have this year. Sure. Uh, you know, I think last year uh, we probably finished where we kind of expected. We knew it was going to be a little bit of a, of a transition. We have a new coach, new philosophy uh, coming into the program. Uh, I thought our guys competed and battled very hard last year. Um, thought we had some good, very good quality wins, uh, you know, games against Shelmont uh, that come to mind, a uh, victory over Green Tech, uh, Nichols outside of Section 2. So, um, yeah, I thought we had a lot to build off of. Um, you know, we're returning four uh, players from our team last year. A couple of the, uh, some new additions and some guys coming up off the JV. So uh, we have a very talented junior class. I think we can rely heavily on over the next two years. Let's talk about that real quick. You said that you know, your first year, man, you did a fabulous job coming in your well, first you. year. Appreciate that. You know, and uh, not, not too many coaches can you know turn around that quick. And um, you know, we had previous coaches in, in this program in particular just couldn't get it done. And you did. Just talk to me about your style of play, how you. What you like to do, and how you got to jump start? Sure. Um, I, you know, I think we're transitioning uh, in this program right now to being a almost a motion or a positionless motion offense. Uh, we like to play five out. We'll, we'll transition that into four out, one in at times. Um, but we're up tempo uh, uh, type of program that shares the ball. Uh, it's tough for ask guys to play hard on defense, and then they go down the other end of the court yeah. and they don't see the ball, uh, you know, come their way at all. So we're trying to share the ball, uh, really get the defense moving. A lot of misdirections, uh, you know, on the offensive end, and then we kind of hang our hat on our uh, matchup two-three zone. Uh, we'll sprinkle in some other things this year with some of the athletes we have, but uh, that's kind of what I think we're going to continue to build our foundation, our program off. All right, so talk to me also about, you know, you lost the three-headed horsemen, you know, and those guys are, you know, on, you know, playing college ball right now. So talk about their, their what they brought to the team and how much you're going to miss those guys and what you got replacing them. Certainly. Um, yeah, it's tough whenever you lose three seniors like that, uh, especially all, all in the backcourt. You know, they do a great job handling the pressure, um, you know, making the right decisions out there and, and carry the bulk of our scoring for the year. So um, the nice thing with, with you know, Connor, Luke, and Sean, they were able to help instill some of the work ethics that we're trying to, you know, really be known for. So they were always the first guys at practice, the last ones to leave. Um, I think they really laid that foundation with some of our younger sophomores that were up on the team last year. Oh, great. All right, Coach, like, like Coach said, to piggyback off what he's saying, you're building a culture here. You know what I mean? You start off your first year doing a good job. Talk about the organizational culture that you're building here at LaSalle. Sure. Um, to me, it's really important that we model what LaSalle is uh, about as a school. Um, you know, first and foremost, these are student athletes, and as much as we want to win and, and, and be competitive on the court, we're really trying to teach these guys uh, real life expectations of, of what it's going to be like in the real world when they go on to bigger and better things outside of uh, you know high school basketball at LaSalle. So uh, we feel that we can teach those types of life lessons through the game of basketball and, uh, and still win a lot of games and be very successful doing so. Now you got a tremendous size on this team. You got a nice, you know, size package yes, on your team. <laughs> One of the things that we notice, and I'm noticing, a lot of people also can attest to it, is that feeding the post is a lost art. How do you get your guys to buy in the fact that you want the big guys to touch the ball? One of the things that your players did allude to is the fact that you have kind of an open and inviting type of offense. So how do you get those guys to make sure those big guys touch the ball? Uh, you know, it's it, it is a little bit difficult at times because you're right. I think the uh, you know the 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 low post uh, just feed the uh, you know feed the ball and the rock into the big man in the middle. That's been kind of a little bit of a lost art, similar to the mid range game a little bit. Uh, starting to see a transition back some, but for us, um, you know we're kind of unique in the way that our, our bigs are athletic. They can get up and down. They can shoot the ball a little bit, so we're able to spread the floor with them. So we're really trying to focus our, our post touches in, in some different uh, ways. So we will run Jemai into the normal low post and you know back to the basket and look to feature him that way. Um, we'll use uh, Owen, who's a phenomenal passer, uh, more out of the mid post where we can get him in some space where he can catch and square up, mm -hmm. um, dish the ball that way. Uh, but yeah, we're really trying to stress to our guys the importance of we need post touches every time down the floor, uh, particularly against the zone. Uh, if we get the ball inside, work inside out, we're going to have some success on the outside. So, so obviously losing those three-headed horsemen, as we like to refer to them, um, lost some leadership there. Who are you looking to emerge as one of the team leaders that you're seeing right now, one of those guys that's going to step up in that um, position, in that role? Certainly. We, we have a, a, a great uh, group of kids that are, are definitely, um, you know, in, into really building this program and taking the next step. 
but we're really going to, uh, from a leadership standpoint, we go as far as Kaylon Dixon takes us. He's kind of that guy, that energy guy. When he has great energy, playing hard, our team feeds off of that. Um, we have some other good leaders. Uh, Anthony Rattel is a senior who provides that, you know, that, that uh, level-headed thinking, um, you know, really models uh, what our coaching staff is, is looking for and reminds some of the younger guys of that each and every day of practice. And then we have another junior, Gabe Lucarelli, who is, again, uh, kind of, I would almost say, a combination of, uh, of Kalon and Anthony. He is uh, he's not quite as fiery as Kalon, mm -hmm. uh, but, he, but he will get, in, uh, you know, get into guys if he needs to, uh, and he brings that calming presence when he's out on the floor as well. So talk to us a little bit about dealing with the modern athlete today. I mean, right now in practice, we saw Kalon right now um, say, Coach, you want me to do this? I did that. You know, having that open dialogue, being able to express himself. Tell me how you approach dealing with the modern athlete. Today. Yeah, it, it's, it, it's different. <laughs> it's different. Uh, you know, just for me, when I played, if, you know, Coach Fruscio, I played for Co Coach Fruscio here at, uh, at LaSalle. If he said to run head first in the wall, we were doing it. We, we know if we didn't, we weren't going to get in. Um, you know, uh, kids nowadays, they want to know the why behind things. So uh, we're really trying to uh, embody that. So it's not just telling them you need to do something, but really share why we're trying to do so or do that. Um, we find that if the more we explain those things and the more we allow them to appropriately, appropriately question uh, some, of our, you know, some of the philosophies and stuff, we get better buy-in. Uh, I'll tell you right now, these kids, uh, they, they will do whatever is asked of them. Mm -hmm. uh, they just want to know why and what, what we think the benefit's going to be out of I like that appropriate question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <Right>. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, so talk to me about the, uh, the, the schedule you have, you know, um, this year coming up. Okay. Certainly. So, I mean, we, we start right off the rip with uh, defending Section 2 uh, AA champs in Saratoga. So, uh, you know, we wanted to challenge ourselves in the non-league. Um, so we'll start with Saratoga. We were going to play uh, Colony in the... Um, at the uh, Washington Ave Armory in the Zero Gravity Showcase, so uh, check yourself outside of there uh, on a neutral floor, which would be nice. And then we have uh, quality teams in CBA uh, coming into our, our gym, so we're kind of renewing that rivalry this year, which I think would be great for both schools. Uh, we're going to get out of Section 2 a little bit, we're going to go up to Bishop Ludden in Syracuse, uh, try to challenge ourselves uh, you know, out of the area with a team that is uh, very well coached, uh, some great size, very athletic. Uh, and then we were in the Troy High Christmas Tournament. So again, trying to bring back that local rivalry with the two Troy schools and uh, you know, challenge ourselves that way, playing against a great Class A school. So make a, make, make a point um, to the viewing audience like oh, about the uh, Colonial Council sure. and how, you know, how effective it is, how much good quality athletes and good coaching in that, in that conference. Talk to us about yeah. it. I, I think uh, <coughs> last year's uh, performance in the, in the Colonial Council certainly speaks for itself. Um, I mean, we had teams that we struggled with uh, here at LaSalle uh, that would, uh, you know, that lost to Shelmont, and then both times we played Shelmont, we lost them by three here, and we beat them at third place. So, um, any given day, the Colonial Council is a grind. Um, you know, we had a school at Catholic High last year that we had some ups and downs, and that's rebuilding. Uh, took us to overtime, and, you know, we we're lucky to, to survive with a one point win. So, uh, the Colonial Council is a much stronger lead than I think, uh, you know, a lot of people in Section 2 realize. There are some phenomenal coaches, some great athletes, and uh, you know I, I don't worry one bit playing in the Colonial uh, with having to get ready for the double A's mm -hmm. for sectionals because we're going to get challenged by Shelmont, uh, Waterville, Lansingburg, uh, some very good schools. So um, you know we're, we're happy to be in the Colonial. We think it provides us um, you know some great local rivalries with schools that are close to us in proximity, and then some schools where we travel a little bit that uh, are going to really push you in. Play. You're doing a terrific job here, Coach, and I like your enthusiasm and I like what you did. You're like, you're eyeing the fact that we were right there last year, you increased your schedule, made some tough competition to get ready for the long run. I like what you're doing here. Thank you, I appreciate you know, it very much. You know, you're doing a great job here and we wish you the best of luck down the road and we definitely look forward to seeing you down the road as well, Coach. I appreciate it. Thank you guys for having me.